Hey everybody, we are back. And last week we were talking about our core values and how those things dictate our actions and our behaviors and they circle back everything that we're doing everything that we're saying circles back to uh our core values so the homework was to really start to define those and these ultimately lead you to your success so today we're going to talk about your success and what it means for you So, it is a wonderful day in the neighborhood. It's a wonderful day to be a neighbor. Well, uh, Ohio gozaimas, konnichiwa, konbawa, wherever you may be. It is a wonderful day here in beautiful Georgia. The green greenery is everywhere. Uh, I don't have my mic on, so I might sound funny, but you know, I'm using my phone this time around because I'm tired of putting this off. I've had this written for two weeks, and, I've, and it's real simple. It's real. Um, actually, I had it when I wrote the other one, so it, it was ready to come out, but I didn't do it. And things kept getting in the way and getting in the way and getting in the way. And I was just thinking about the success, uh, success in general. Um, going back to my core values, I wrote this and it's circling back to where it's supposed to be. So what's the problem? And the problem is this. Uh, I need to be successful at what I was, what I was trying to do. And you know, it just wouldn't come to fruition. And what was the problem in that? Why was that a problem creating that problem? And it's me. Okay. I don't know if you ever try to do things and you just get in your own way. Or you just allow things to really just suck the joy out of what you're trying to do. And <clears throat> for me to do a podcast or to uh, really sit down and try to get things done the way I want to um, I procrastinate things got to be lined up uh, even though I've had this for two weeks every day something gets in the way where I don't do it and it's not that uh, I could just sit there and do it, which I probably could. I just just get in the front, you know, turn the camera on and start. But a lot of times I hit start, and you know, if I'm in the bad in a bad mood, it's gonna really affect what I say and what I do and how it's being done, the delivery, and. I was thinking about this whole thing, the core values and things that it must be done. I need to get it done no matter what. So I'm doing this out of my car. I'm not in my room. I'm not uh, at my house. I'm not anywhere. I'm just sitting in the car and God was like, it's time. And I said, okay. So uh, as I was saying, this whole thing was about success. And the success of uh, doing what you're tr- called to do and doing what you're trying to do and things that you had in your mind that you wanted to get done. And I hope you wrote down your core values because that's what's going to bring you to your success. And uh, first off, first question, a few questions about this. First question is this, what benefit is it? Now guys, God wants you to succeed, okay? He wouldn't have put this idea in your head if he didn't. That makes sense. So, God wants you to succeed. So, what benefit is it to you if you do? God puts a lot of things that, you know, will benefit the whole world. But what benefit is it to you if you do succeed? That could be a... 
demotivating factor because sometimes we are called to do things that we don't want to do. And uh, <laughs> we'll sit there and make all the excuses in the world not to do it. But for us to be successful in the Lord's eyes, we need to get this done. But it does we don't see the benefit for ourselves, so we don't do it. I want you to get past that. I want you to actually, if, if you're feeling like that, sometimes I feel that way. And I'll say, I'll say, okay, you want me to do this and I'm going to do it. I need help with the motivation part. I need help doing it. I need help seeing the big picture because we're usually offered this small little sliver. Okay. God wants you to do this. He wants you to start this business. He wants you to, uh, uh, provide this service or this product and you have the idea and it's a great idea but you don't see the benefit so you don't do it ask God to open your eyes to see what the big picture is what's behind it okay what's his motivating factor for doing it giving this to you so what's the benefit of success and if things go the way you want it to go right your success or your vision is fulfilled say you have this idea of uh, you know I don't know a brand new dessert and um, it's, it's just the greatest thing it's going to bring you billions of dollars what benefit is that to God why should he give you his hand of protection and help you get this thing off the ground if it's something that you coming up with so what's behind that now God usually inspires us he gives us visions he's give us dreams he's uh you know giving us things to really help the world do the things that you know he's giving us inspiration but we tend to get in the way and make it our own and like hmm okay I got an idea. I'm going to do this. This is going to really just change my whole life and my children's children and everything else. But what benefit is that to God? So why should he have his hand in it? So and sometimes we do things. What benefit is it to the world? It's, it's blessing me. And God's hand is behind it. Sometimes you got to motivate yourself because you got to see what it is that is uh, that he's trying to do through you to bless the world. So that's the biggest thing. Why should God help me do this? I have this big dream of doing something and, you know, it has no impact whatsoever on anybody but me. So why should God help me do this? And I need to clear that. I need to figure that out. So really, these questions, you know, they help us to see what what our motives are, the balance, the scales. Um, I'm listening to the power of Choa, and Choa is really a Japanese philosophy of searching for balance. We usually try to do things either it's going to be for ourselves or in some other cases of some people I know, they'll just do everything for God and don't care about anybody else. So it makes God seem like he doesn't care about anybody else because that's what that's how they're portraying it. Or, you know, like I said, the, the other side is you're self-centered and nobody else matters. There's there needs to be balance. And Choa is really the search for balance in everything. So the way you eat, you know, <clears throat> desserts are good. Uh, when, when I think about this uh, tea, I love tea. And it's never been that way. To, uh, when I got older, I liked tea. And when I started to understand the whole tea ceremony and things like that, I got even more into it. But there needs to be a balance because tea is bitter. 
So a lot of times you pair that with uh, a sweet and there needs to be a balance it out. Now, if I'm just sitting there drinking sugar tea and some cake, I'm messing myself up. And if it's, you know, too bitter, it might be too acidic or, or something. I'm, I got all these bitters and then I add more bitter or not just try to do it on my own. I probably will stop drinking tea. So that defeats that purpose. So there needs to be balance. And the motives really help clear those out. So that's what I want you to think about. You know, why are you doing the things that you're doing and seeking balance in that too? Okay. Why are you doing the things that you're doing? What benefit is it to God? What benefit is it to the world? What benefit is it to yourself? Why should God help you? And as you answer those questions, look for the balance. Because if you can answer all those things out, I mean, <clears throat> if you can answer all of those questions, it'll probably balance itself out. Okay, this is what this does, this is what this does, this is what this does. You're motivated to do it. Unstoppable. So, and that's what I want you to be. So, all the best to you. I love you very much. And I think you can do it. I, I, actually, I know you can do it. You can do it because you wouldn't, you wouldn't even be thinking about it if you couldn't. Right? Right.